if you look at this hadith, and there's a narration that will come up later that will repeat this, and there's actually many other narrations similar to this hadith. We find that the Prophet wasallam has emphasized the right of the mother more so than the father, and more so than anyone else, because we know that the family comes first in our relations with, 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 with society. And here the mother has been emphasized, and then the father, and then the, the, the family people, and then we know that the rest of the people will follow after that, as we will come to later on in the book. And it's actually an ijma' amongst the scholars of Islam, that the mother takes priority of being, uh, of one, uh, being uh, 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 respected and her rights being uh, fulfilled, i.e. to be good to her and to be kind to her takes priority upon the father. There's an ijma' upon that. Despite the fact that the scholars in the books of fiqh also say that the father has more right to be obeyed. His right individually is greater. His decision is greater. His yani, command to you is greater. You have a greater obligation to obey him other than your mother. Yet the mother has a greater right to be shown ihsan and bir, and i.e. to be dutiful to her, to help her, to have kindness to her. And actually this is very clear from not just the hadith, especially here, three times the Prophet ﷺ mentioning again and again, and in other narrations more than three times, that the mother was more deserving of the bir, of the, of the son or the child. But this is clear in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَسَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانِ بِوَالَدَيْهِ حَمْلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ In Surah Al-Luqman, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we have enjoined upon man to be good to his parents, he mentions parents, الْوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا And then what does he say after mentioning the parents? He said, حَمْلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ His mother bore him in weakness and hardship. So after the parents, it is the mother who has been singled out as the one who has been uh, who has taken the hardship and gone through all the stress and the hassle that we know that gives her this this maqam and actually we shouldn't be surprised by that because the link between the mother and the child you know everyone knows about that no one needs to be taught about the the link of rahma and love that is specifically unique between the child and the mother a, a link of mercy a link of rahma and that itself is beautiful because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know, has told us to, to ask Him, to ask Him Azza wa to have mercy upon the parents. And that's why the mother's womb, that place which we gain our, which we get our shelter and protection, at the time when we're most desperate and in need for it, is called the Rahim. It is called the Rahim, it's from the same root verb as Rahma. So we can see the link, the, the Rahim itself is where the child develops during pregnancy. And then when it comes out, it is the continual link of the Prophet the, 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 the continual link of the mother to the child through Rahmah, and an intense form of Rahmah. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعَبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّا عِنْدَكَ, ال... عندك الْكِبْرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَكُنْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْحَرْهُمَا وَكُنْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا it's beautiful, the specific words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses in this ayah. And your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him, and that you be dutiful to your parents. And if one of them or both of them attain old age in your life, say not to them a word of disrespect, nor shout at them, but address them in terms of honor. And lower unto them the wing of submission and humility through mercy. And say, my Lord, bestow on them your mercy, as they did bring me up when I was young. And this yani, is almost a return of the, of the rahmah that you have taken from her, that you have been uh, cultured in. Her great role of giving you tarbiyah, yeah, that, that, that is uh, almost natural to her. It's almost like the mother is a walking form of rahmah, based and centralized around the womb itself. Your home, what produced you, what looked after you, what protected you, what, what fed you. So when we understand this link, and then we understand then how important it is for us to appreciate bir in its correct way, and how to give the parents the, 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 the right that they deserve. And we can also see that this, uh, this order in the hadith, by the way, where the Prophet ﷺ mentions the, the, the mother's right, uh, three times and then compares it to the, to, to the father uh, uh, on the fourth occasion. It's a three to one ratio. 
And we see that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَسَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالَدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ قُرْحًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ قُرْحًا وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَانُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَحْرًا i.e. and we have enjoined on man to be dutiful and kind to his parents. His mother bears him with hardship and she brings him forth with hardship. And the bearing of him and the weaning is in 30 months. And so we can see that the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith, by showing that yani, the, 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 the mother and her right is given a three to, to one ratio to the father, is almost as if he is specifying these three stages which the mother specifically uh, is, is, is particular almost, is particular to her only this quality, this ability to do that naturally as the mother, she will get a reward and she gets a right equal to that. The father cannot do anything in these three stages, he has no role in that. And so the mother cleans up in these areas. And if you look at these, these actions, the first, the action of, of, of pregnancy. And you know, I mean, if, if, if you're not married and you've not been able to observe this, and it's very difficult. But if you see the sickness and the tiredness and the difficulty that a woman goes through when she's pregnant with her child, and not just the difficulty, but the, the things that she has to give up, so many things that she enjoys that she has to give up. And her free time has to be now uh, uh, sacrificed. And she can't go to places that she'd like to, and she has to go through much difficulty. And then the actual, the, the, the giving of birth, I mean, subhanAllah. I mean, you, let me tell you something. No woman can ever uh, understand and appreciate the pain of, of birth unless she gives birth herself. And then she uh, understands automatically. And no man... Okay, can describe that unless he sees it. Okay, if you haven't seen your wife give birth, then you know, you just don't know where to work. And, and let me tell you something, it's something which is absolutely incredible. And something totally ajeeb. I, I still have, I still have a jacket. Okay, when my wife uh, gave birth to Isa, my eldest son, she grabbed my jacket so hard, and she, uh, it, it, her, her fingernails dug into the material and she ripped my, 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 my jacket. And Swana is still there. I mean, it's a, a, a total good jacket wasted. And, uh, you know, honestly, it's a, and I was, and I remember because, you know, she was, she was under gas and she's screaming her head off and, you know, she's got me like, she's got, I, why, why then? I don't know, but she had me with the hands and she was like this and I was being pulled in like this. And I'm, what am I doing here? And she's, it's, you know, and she was not with me at all. She was on another planet altogether. She was screaming. Around. You cannot imagine that moment and that pain. You can't. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa recognizes it. And then you move on to the next stage. The stage of the weaning and the, the, the culturing and the bringing up of the child. The breastfeeding and the difficulties in that. Again, the restriction of lifestyle. The, 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 you know, the, the difficulties that one has to go. You know, the, 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 you, 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 I don't know if you can, you can understand, people will tell you or if you've seen it, the tiredness of the mother, the sleepless nights, how early she wakes up and so on. And what, I suppose what makes it even worse is that often the husband is going to be sleeping right next to her and in a different world altogether. Doesn't know what is going on, absolutely innocent, just doesn't care, or hasn't got a thought in the world for what's happening next, uh, right next door. And the, the mother is going through so much stress and hassle and pain. And so here, these are three things which are specific to the mother. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned her three times. And then we start to reach parity now. Or do we? Because then the father now starts to take his position of tarbiyah. But it's not like as if suddenly he takes over. I mean, fathers, do you know that once they're, they're, you didn't see that as Allah says, uh, 30 months, Allah mentions in the Quran. 30 months is equal to two years of weaning and a minimum pregnancy of six months. Okay, that's very important because obviously uh, nine months is the normal pregnancy time. But the Quran, and that's a miracle itself by the way in the Quran, that it shows that it's possible. The Quranic worldview understands that a six month pregnancy is a viable pregnancy and a, a viable child is, 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 is produced. And this, this ayah has very important ramifications in the rulings of zina. Okay, and the rulings of giving qada, of judging against cases where people uh, come, you know, uh, to give you a very brief example, uh, if uh, a couple get married and six months after the, the day of marriage, they're, they're, there's a child. So automatically you're thinking, Astaghfirullah, what's happened here? Right? Six months? I mean, it should be nine months, right? And Ali radiallahu anhu, uh, if I remember correctly, was, uh, gave qada 
and he ruled in favor. And obviously this happened and the father said, you know, you've done zina, all right? And then you married me. You know, how can I have had a child within six months, at least nine months or ten months or something, how straight away? But the Ali radiallahu anh gave qada. At that time, don't, don't think about our scientific advancements now where we can work out dates and blah, blah, no. That was at that time, Ali radiallahu anh said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that her weaning is, 60, is 30 months. ثَلَاثُونَ shahra, Which means, we know that from the other uh, فِصَالُ هُوَ عَامِينَ In the other ayah that we mentioned uh, last session, that the weaning is in two years. But this one, which is 24 months. But here it's 30 months. Which means that six months must be the pregnancy itself. And so therefore, if Allah says that a pregnancy of a child can be six months there, and then, and then two years afterwards, 24 months afterwards, therefore it means that the sixth month child is viable, and this child actually is yours. And so He ruled against the husband, and they, they, were, they were happy with that. So they, you know, this shows that some of the ayat can be used in a such very deep sense by the scholars of fiqh when they're uh, making uh, qada and, 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 and uh, uh, judgment. But as I said, these three things, these three qualities and characteristics, they are specific to the mother. But then the, fa- the father doesn't suddenly come and take over and do everything. The mother herself then plays an equal role in spending upon the child and feeding the child and clothing the child, you know, throughout the rest of the years. In fact, more so than not, the mother does much more than the father. The mother does much more than the father, even at this stage. And as we said before, the role of tarbiyah, the key role of parents, okay, to make this child cultured and bring them up in a way to get the golden objective achieved, which is that the rububiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is understood and achieved and affirmed by the child. The mother is the one who is responsible for that. The mother is not, they say just that she, behind every great man is a great woman. But behind every great nation is a woman. Because the woman is, is, is absolutely key. The mother is key in developing these characteristics and these emotions and the behavior of a child that, has, that he or herself will not only recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in the greatest of purity, but then be able to interact with the rest of society to make it a real com- a community, a real nation. And that's the maqam of uh, the mother. The ulama also mentioned, and again, Ibn Hajar radiallahu anh, he precedes everyone in that, in mentioning some of the, the other reasons why the mother is more emphasized almost, or why the Prophet sallallahu exaggerated more in the haqq, in the right of the mother over the, the father. One of these reasons is that, you know, you know the mother, right? Your relationship with her, your closeness to her is always behind, uh, you know, behind, behind closed doors. It's in the house. It's out of the way of the people. People do not see your day-to-day interaction with your mother. But with your father, it's very, very different. Your father, by by nature and by his by his going to the masjid and going to work and so on, is very much outside the house. But the mother is always inside the house. And this itself, yani, as you as you well know, means that you can get away with a lot more against your mother than you can you can with your father. And so often because of that, her rights, okay, uh, the man, uh, uh, the, the, the children almost get a, a, a greater audacity almost to, to uh, you know, try and pull off acts against their, their mother of disobedience and being rude and so on and so on, that they would not be able to do against their father. Not just because the father is stronger, but just basically because he's in front of the people. You know, you, you know that is a very silly thing to try and do something with your father and then go and meet him with your friend. He will do your bestie publicly. He will really embarrass you in front of someone. I mean, forget about the whole idea of it being a sin, but he can come and he meets an uncle and you're there and then your uncle will say, you know, he's, he's, he's a good lad, your son. And then, yeah, oh yeah, really? He does this and he says that and he does this, says that. And then he'll tell him and then he'll tell the shopkeeper and then you're telling him and you're thinking, oh my God, why did I come out with you in the first place? Just to be just slated and slated and slated. And that's the nature, isn't it? It's the nature of, 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 the, of, the, of our tabi'ah to do that. And also we know that the, the mother herself, by her nature, she's a lot more softer, a lot more weaker as well. And that makes her more vulnerable. And unfortunately it makes her almost more uh, vulnerable to contempt on our, on our uh, behalf, on our side. And when someone has that contempt, they find it easier to establish authority and to be more forceful with someone like that. And that's a, another problem. And again, so therefore the Prophet ﷺ, who is uh, almost trying to recognize that, that, uh, that uh, inequality in the relationship, and then trying to defend 
that principle, trying to defend the principle that the mother is already disadvantaged compared to the father, and so we need to now make it up to make it emphasize her right even more. Not only do we yani, uh, see this weakness, not only do we see this weakness and recognize it, but also its effect upon us makes us worse. How? We know that the mothers, we all do, because our biggest problem, if you ever want to see a major source of the lack of blessings and problems, you know, amongst our community, amongst the Muslims, it is because we mistreat our mothers, okay? Uh, and we do it so easily. And, and, you know, they don't help us. They really don't help us in this, in this, uh, in this action. Because their nature is, because of their weak nature, because they're so soft, they get angry very, very quickly, because their love for their children is more... Uh, than uh, you know, the normal love that can be seen. It's very intense. Uh, and they get very, very upset. Very upset at little things that you do. They're very, very close to you. And sometimes, you know, we cannot appreciate that. And what happens often is that they cry a lot. And we know that mothers cry a lot. That's by in her nature. And we know that they get very angry. And we know on how many times have we heard the du'as against us. Day and night making du'as against us, and they never mean to, but they go away and saying this and saying that and whatever. And because of her nature, and then that caused the child to become angry, you know, and it's often without any good reason. You do something and suddenly she will just go off and you think, SubhanAllah, what's hap- what have I done? What's happening? And so then that causes a greater sense of contempt almost, and a greater sense of anger in the child. And they try to then push that off, and then, you know, it almost becomes a vicious circle, gets worse and worse. And we're all guilty of that, everyone. And so here the Prophet ﷺ has recognized this anomaly, recognized the nature of the woman, and therefore emphasized, if it wasn't already enough in the Qur'an by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, after worship him, be good to the parents. Not only making it from the absolute individual obligations, not only as we come to see making disobedience to them from the kabair, from the deadly and the major sins, okay, but then in our own understanding, the Prophet ﷺ, in a more subtle way is saying, she has more right to be treated good. She has more right that you be dutiful to her. She has more right for you to have more patience with her. And it's important that we understand these weaknesses and these, and these, these problems. Because if we do, then we now know not to fall into the trap. We now know that, okay, this is how she is, but she can't help some of these things. We should recognize that. And you know, the Prophet ﷺ recognized that, so why can't we recognize that? So then once you understand these kind of characteristics and you appreciate that more, then we can hopefully be able to uh, make the haqiq and achieve uh, our goal of giving her more, uh, uh, more, 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 bir, more uh, love and more concern and more kindness and so on. And her maqam of course, the, the, you know, you might say, you know, really is her maqam, her status, really deserving of such a, such a, such a high uh, pressure upon us to maintain. And of course, there's no doubt about that yani, one little bit, right? And we have a very famous uh, narration from Ibn Umar, the narrator of the, the previous uh, narration, when he was sitting in the, the haram, and a man came uh, making tawaf, okay, with his mother on his back, okay? And he came to, to Ibn Umar and he said, you know, have I uh, fulfilled my right to my mother? And Ibn Umar said, La, wala zafra. You have not even done a zafra. And you know what a zafra is? A zafra is, uh, in, in this narration, it's the sound, it's like a moan, it's the intake of breath, okay, during labor. Okay? So your making tawaf hasn't even reached the level of one of them sounds that your mother went through while she was giving birth to you. I mean, you know, you think about that. This is a, you know, a beautiful, yeah, a graphic illustration of the right of the mother upon us so that we can appreciate how much we need to give her bir and how much that we are deficient in giving her bir. I mean today, subhanAllah, look at our, uh, our society, look at our people. We take a shopping, we think that we've saved the world. We take a, 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 to the corner shop and we think we've done the whole world a favor. And you know, there's, uh, we're talking about hajj and, and tawaf, right? Yeah, people think, right, I'm going to take my parents to hajj as if they've done some huge, you know, big action. And then, you know, oh, my mother's old, so I'm going to take her in a wheelchair. And you know, people, they, people, they, they, they say that, right? And they probably say it because they don't realize what they're doing, what they're saying. I, uh, I, I took my mother uh, around, uh, uh, the, uh, I did a hajj or umrah with my mother in a wheelchair, right? And, and they probably paid someone else to do the wheeling as well, right? And they make it out like to be a big thing. And they should read this narration. I mean, they, listen, try carrying her on, on your back, make the tawaf, 
and then realize that you haven't even repaid back yani, that one little sound that your mother actually experienced and she, she made when she was going through the pains of giving birth to you. So subhanAllah, her maqam is something which uh, really is very difficult for us to, to understand. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, in the authentic narration said that yani, be at her feet for Thumbal Jannah, for paradise is at her feet. You'll find paradise there. It's there. If you want to get to Jannah, you'll find it at the feet of your mother. You'll find it in her, it in her service. You'll find paradise by obeying her and keeping her happy. Why? Because only the one who is able to make absolute perfect tahqiq, okay, absolutely perfectly achieve keeping her mother happy, that kind of person will be a person of paradise. That kind of person, that kind of quality will be a person of paradise. And that's all you know, that we have time for. Uh, Insha'Allah in this session and hopefully we'll uh, complete the hadith in the next wa jazakumullah khair wa subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfirukallahumma wa atubu ilayk